St. John, the ninth chapter, 1 through the 11th verse. We're going to look this morning, amen, at what some of the church leaders were doing back in Jesus' time. And how the church back then was somewhat like the church of today, amen, in its corruptness. And not the church itself, but church leaders, amen. amen. The Bible said for a reason that God called pastors after his own heart. Amen. He called pastors after his own heart because he wanted the people, amen, to receive the blessings and the promises that he passed down from generation to generation. We see that it took about 42 generations before Jesus was born. He is described as a lion out of the tribe of Judah. Yes. Judah was one of the sons of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel after he wrestled with an angel all night long. Mm -hmm. That angel that he wrestled with was the angel of the Lord. In the Old Testament, any time you see a passage, the angel of the Lord is talking about Jesus himself. So Jesus wrestled, amen, with Jacob all night long until he touched him in the hall of his time. Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. He said, you got to let me go. The day is broken. I won't let you go until you bless me. And God blessed him and changed his name to Israel. Jacob being the name supplanter or trickster to Israel. Amen. And Israel was God's chosen people. Jacob's name being changed to Israel had 12 sons. One of his sons, whose name was Reuben. Amen. Once Jacob had married Rachel and Leah. Rachel was his favorite. Leah was not. When Rachel and Leah, amen, Leah began to have children. And she had child after child after child. Rachel was barren. She couldn't have two children. So she gave, amen, her handmaid to Jacob. And their children in her name. Leah said, you will not get one up on me. So Leah gave her handmaid to Jacob. Amen. Bear more children in her name. And then God opened Rachel's womb. And she had two sons. During this time. We see that Reuben, the oldest son, went in and laid with Jacob's, one of the handmaids that Jacob had. And because he did so, he, being the firstborn, done this in the sight of his father. He took the birthright out of Reuben's hands. And he gave the kingship part of the birthright to Judah. And he gave the other two portions of the birthright to the two sons of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim. When they went into the promised land, all of the sons were to bow down to Judah. And Ephraim and Manasseh, which were the half tribes of Israel, went and possessed a portion of the land. Jesus, coming out of the tribe of the priestly kingship, which is Judah, now stands. Amen. Not coming in the form as an angel anymore, but he is, amen, standing as the word of God. For the Bible says that he sent forth his word and his word healed him. He said his word, amen, became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. And now he's going forth doing his ministry. And doing his ministry, we find that Jesus walks up in the temple on the Sabbath day. I believe in John chapter 9, if you have it with me, starting at the first verse. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. God is looking for somebody to make his works manifest. Hallelujah. He must work the works of him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he hath thus spoken, he spat on the ground 
and made clay of the spirit. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes opened? He answered and said unto them, A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam, and wash. And I went and washed, and I received my sight. Then said they unto him, What is he? He said, I know not. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless us as we Lord God, go into your word. That someone, Lord God, to just get a picture of how, Lord God, you and your presence, your omniscience, your all, your, 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 your all knowingness, your omnipotence, your all powerfulness. Lord God, let someone get a picture, Lord Jesus, that you are the only true and living God, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The pool of Siloam was, in the day of Jewish time, a swimming pool in Jerusalem. Amen. It was located by the sheep market and it had about five porches. Those porches, amen, were in the shape of a pentagon made by Hezekiah. It was covered, it was a covered con conclave, amen, with five arches over it so that people could be protected from the weather, so that they could be protected from the wind or the sun. And in this porch, amen, people went to bathe themselves. In our text today, we see a man who was blind from his birth. In Jewish culture, amen, if a child was born blind, it was said that something that his parents had done, or some sin that his parents had done, that now God is taking retribution through the children. Amen. But I read in the Old Testament where it says that the sins of the father shall not be passed on to the children. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that God brought us away and said that even before he came on the scene. We love the good child. Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, amen, we would be men most miserable. We wouldn't have a chance. We couldn't, amen, stand, hallelujah, the judgment that would come upon us. Somebody shout yes. Yes. I'm so glad that God forgave us and he died for us even before we was conceived out of our mother's womb. Father, we were yet in the mind of God, in the spiritual realm. Amen. God died for us because he knew that we were coming out of the spirit realm into time. And that we would need a savior even before we stepped on the face of the earth. The reason, amen, that I began to look at this particular or passage of scripture or the things I've seen in this particular passage of scripture is that when everything was said and done, Jesus was walking on the Saturday, he had his disciples with him, and he stopped and he seen the blind man. He went and he spit on the ground. When you go outside this church this afternoon, Take time and spit on the ground. <laughs> why? Thank, thank God. Somebody said why. Hallelujah. <laughs> the same thing, amen, that hit me. Why? When Jesus spat on the ground, if you were to go outside and spit on the ground, you wouldn't make much clay with that spit, that little bit of spit you spit on the ground. Something to think about in your bag this morning. So how much spit came out of Jesus' mouth? When we look at the word of God, sometimes we don't really see the story behind the story. Jesus probably stopped right then, 
seen the blind man, looked at his disciples, and threw up. And the Bible describes it as spit. <laughs> when he threw up in my mind's eye, then he knelt down and made Mixed the brew up with the dirt and made mud. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Do I have your attention this morning? Yeah. <laughs> he took the mud that he made from regurgitation and put it on the man's eye. If you were blind and you were standing there, would you say, Jesus, I don't put that stuff on my eyes? He wouldn't see it. <laughs> if you were blind, he see it. Jesus walked over to you, put that stuff on your face. Would you say, Jesus, no, no, don't put that yucky, yucky, no. Or would you accept what he was about to do for you? Yes. Amen. It may sound vulgar, but the Bible goes on to declare that it was done that the works of God may be manifest. Jesus took something that was so vulgar to us, turned it into a miracle. Amen. Look at us today. Look at one another. In the celestial realm, cherubims and seraphim. When it comes to man, if they were to look at us, they would see us probably as a vulgar. Mm -hmm. But it's man that thou art mindful of him. Amen. He's not like us. Lucifer, when he was created, he was created an angel of light. Temples were put in him. Smash those keys, mother. When he moved, music came out of his body. To glorify God. He was an angel of light and man. He was given a throne and said, I'm the mountain of God. And he walked among the stones of fire. Now, something like that, thank you, compared to us when you look at that. What is man that thou art mindful of him? All the little creatures. God said, I made him in my own image. And then when he spit on the ground and made clay, put it on his eyes and told him to go watch in the pool of Siloam. Amen. When God, amen, tells us to come boldly before the throne and receive salvation, receive deliverance. Amen. This man went and obeyed God. Sometimes we act like we just can't obey God for nothing. We'd rather stay in sin And tough it out with sin and the pleasures of this flesh than to do what God's word says. In other words, we say, Lord God, I don't want you to heal me. I don't want you to put that on my eyes. I'd rather be blind. This is what we say when we reject God. Because God wants to manifest his spirit in somebody's life so that his will will be done. Amen. Amen. Help him here. He wants to manifest through somebody and then the glories of heaven on the earth. He ain't coming back on this earth no more. Amen. Until after the rapture, until after the judgment, when his throne will be set up on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, where he will rule this world. He's not coming back. So, how in the world can he be represented in the earth if he don't use you and me? The disciples said, did this man sin? Jesus said, his parents didn't sin, neither did he sin. But that the works of God may be manifest. Is that all right? That's all right. Thank you, mother. Now, after his disciples stood back and looked, many times Jesus did this. This wasn't the first time Jesus done this, he can see. He did it one other time, and I believe the man went, and Jesus spit you know, anointed his eyes, and he went and washed, he come back, he said, can you see? 
He said, yeah, I can see a little bit, but I see me in his trees. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think he did it again. He said, go back and watch again. When he come back again, he may come back to see him. Amen. Clearly. Amen. Yeah. You may have something in your life right now that you don't know how to deal with, that you can't let go of. Amen. A problem, maybe a sickness or whatever. I don't care what it is. Are you seeking God? Amen. For the healing of your body. Are you seeking God for Amen. Peace of mind. Are you seeking God? Are you continuing to seek God? It's not sometimes just going the first time, but you may have to go back again and again and again. Amen. But we see on this occasion, when you were spit up, made him stop clear, put it on the man's eyes, when he went and watched and come back, he could see clearly. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Listen here. When the man went and watched in the pool of Siloam, Jesus was gone. Jesus and the disciples took off. He didn't even see Jesus no more. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He didn't see Jesus no more. He did not come back to see Jesus. Jesus didn't take time away for him. Amen. Jesus took off. Man didn't see Jesus anymore. And Fred said, Who are you? Man, you can see now. How in the world are you seeing? You were one of the blind begging for money and stuff, wasn't you? And the man said, yeah, I'm here. My appearance had not changed. I'm still the same one. Amen. Jesus wants to do a miracle in your life that when people see you in your future, amen, as compared to your past, they won't recognize who you are even though they deal with you on a daily basis. I need to say that again. God wants to manifest himself in you so greatly that when people see you in your future, they won't recognize you because they know you from the past. Good God Almighty. God wants to manifest something in you. Amen. That will change so much. Amen. That will look at you when they talk to you, when they come into your presence. Amen. They'll even feel different. About you. And people are going to feel different about you. Some are going to celebrate what God's doing for you, and some are going to hate you for what God is doing for you. Can you stand to be blessed? That when God is going to manifest Himself in you, some folks are going to like you and accept it, and some folks are not. Good God Almighty. Some that were standing around his friend, and they said, It's not the same word. Some said, Yes, it's him. He said, Yeah, I'm here. And I imagine that they begin to rejoice. In Jewish custom, when you had a deformity in your body, you had to be taken to amen, the church. And the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the priests had to look at you amen, and say, you are all right now, you can come back into society. Are you all right now, you can come to the church. Are you all right now, you can come to, you can work in the church. And this is what they did. They took him to the Pharisees. So he can see now. He's all right to come to church and, amen, work in the church with us. And, 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 is he all right to do something? Yeah, he's all right. But how did you get healed? Mm -hmm. Who healed you? Amen. Mm -hmm. When did this happen? His friends were happy for him. But the church leaders began to question him. Found out that he was healed on the Sabbath day. This man cannot be the son of God because he done what Moses said not to do. Do any kind of work on the Sabbath day. He healed this man on the Sabbath day. So he can't be, amen, the son of God. So the other Sadducee said, well, you better watch what you're saying, man. If anybody can heal somebody like this, he got to be something. If he can change a man from being God to see it, Some will see some of his friends were happy for him, and some were not. We see some of the church leaders, church members, church folks Amen. were happy for him, and some were not. Amen. When God bless you, people in the world, some of them are going to be happy for you, and some of them are not. 
When God manifests Himself in you, there's going to be people in the church going to be happy for you. And some of them are. Mm -hmm. When you go outside, everybody, when all of us go outside this afternoon, the sun is going to be shining. Guess who the sun is going to be shining when the all of us are standing out there? Yeah. It's going to be shining on everybody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't care what you've done last night, the sun is still going to shine on yeah. you. studying commentary, commentary said God didn't make him blind. He was just born that way. We go through situations, saints, and sometimes they're just born that way. But I'm here to tell you, just because it happened that way, you don't have to stay that way. Hallelujah. Yeah. You may be in a situation with your family. Maybe a situation with your job. Sickness in your body, whatever, I don't care. When you come into contact with Jesus, your situation can change. Amen. 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 God wants to manifest himself through somebody. Let the works of God himself may be manifest in the earth. Amen. God just wants to show us that he's still a true and living God. He's still an awesome God. He's still a mighty God. So whatever you're going through, God can handle it if you give it to him. This man, I see, didn't walk over to Jesus like Zacchaeus did. Zacchaeus, he went over in the tree looking for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And they say, you know, Jesus walked up to him and said, Zacchaeus, come on down out of that tree. I'm going to your house today. There was one man, he was sick. He was on the side of the road. He heard Jesus was coming. You know what he done? He said, He kept on hollering. Amen. Hey, brother, come on and say, man, you need to shut up. Jesus is past. Shut up. Be quiet. He kept on hollering. Don't turn down it. Have mercy on me. He didn't care about them jokers. Come right. tell your life you can't care about what people think. Amen. 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 And Jesus walked over to him and dealt with him. He said, bring him to me. Amen. But this man, he was minding his own business. And Jesus seen him. Went and spit up, made stuff, put on the eye, told him to go wash. 
And Jesus took off. Amen. After all that had happened in the temple and with the Pharisees and all, what happened, Steve? The Pharisees, church leaders, the pastors, the bishops, and all the still, they were so caught up in the carnal, carnal system, amen, mindset of traditionalism concerning what Moses wrote in the Ten Commandments, that they couldn't see anything else. They ended up putting this man right back out of church. And when they put him out of church, we found that this man was walking alone with his eyesight. Everybody didn't turn back on him seen like. And guess who shows up? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus shows up and meets this man I don't know how long since the time he healed him until the time this man was walking by himself. Amen. Dad, Jesus met him. Before he met him, just before, sometime before he met him. Amen. You know what the Pharisees done, Steve? They said, bring him to us. They called him. When his friend brought him to him and all that stuff, you know, they said, who healed you, Jesus? Blah, blah, blah. On the Sabbath day, Jesus came to him. You know, they went through all that debate. They finally come to us this evening. Bring his parents here. They went and got his parents, questioned his parents. Parents walked up in the church. What is going on with your son? Parents been coming to worship in church, having a good time. And they don't want to get brought out of the church. I guess they knew what was about to happen. And they said, answer us. The wife looked at the husband. And the husband looked at the wife and said, he's a man. He's only enough to answer for himself. Turn it back on. Hey, y'all getting something out of here? Yeah. And so here we see him all alone now. Sometimes getting kicked out of the church, Jesus meets him again. And Jesus and then begin to talk to him. Seem like when you down on your luck. Seem like when you done hit rock bottom. Seem like when all your friends, amen, has done gone and left. Some of them used to come to you and got stuff from you. Now that you need help, you can't find a way to help. Amen. Your family members, when you let them borrow your car, you let them borrow your stuff, and blah, 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 blah. They seem like they don't remember all that stuff. They walk out on you. Seem like you're just standing by yourself. When you're standing alone, and you can't go to no lower, the only place you can go is up, because you're rock bottom already. That's when Jesus shows up. And Jesus showed up, and Jesus began to talk to him. He said, everything that you just went through, for the glory of God. So whatever you're going through, even at your rock bottom state, it's for us, Father. It may be for the glory of God. Maybe not for you, but for somebody else. Amen. Amen. And God will use you to somebody to look in your life and say, if Sister Mary can do it, I can too. Amen. If Sister Margaret can go through it, I can too. Amen. If Peter Lee can go through it, I think I can do it too. Amen. Amen. Missionary Gamble can go through it. I think I can make it to this. Amen. We don't know what glory God is going to manifest in our lives. That's why he chose people from all walks of life. We have some in here with master's degrees. We have some in here that didn't quite get their degrees. <laughs> but when you turn it in the hands of God, my God, hallelujah. God will put you in position that nobody else can walk in. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going back trying to get what a little bit I can. They say, so, you know, I see guys with backpacks trying to come to the river with backpacks. I study for my, amen, coach class and trying to get my life medical license. I'm grateful. But you see people trying to do better. I seem to look at that, start seeing guys with back. People are trying to do better. Yes. People come from all walks of life. Some of you wouldn't been to college. Some on the job ain't even got a high school education. But they're in a leadership position. 
God will raise you up. That's right. Amen. I said, God will raise you up. And the lady said right there, ask her, get a testimony sometime. She don't have the degrees that my daughter has. But my God got put in a position making management over the store, making what, $50,000, $60,000 for a while? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God will position you to get glory for His own glory. He'll bring you out for His own glory. God will, amen, establish you for His own glory. He'll bring you in the presence of the King for His own glory. And here's what I want to tell you, Emmanuel Temple. When God brings you in the presence of the King for His glory, you got to know how to deal with what God takes you and what He brings you. When God establishes you, you have to know what to do with it. Because if you don't, you're going to squander it. Oh, my God. Yeah. You're going to squander it. You're going to lose right. it. That's right. It's going to slip through your hands. You're going to waste it. That's right. Amen. You allow somebody to come and take it right from you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. You've got to know what to do with it. And that's what I want, co Pastor and I, we've been trying to we want to get to church. We want to bring your awareness to the point that when God blesses you, you have to know what to do with the blessings that He gives you. They may come physical, they may come spiritual. I don't care which way they come, they are coming. But you have to know what to do with what God gives you when they come to you. Amen. 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 Now, when this Amen story. Ended up, amen, this man found himself, amen, doing something that he didn't think he would do. Or going places where he didn't think he was worthy to go. Amen. God used him in a special way. Amen. There's not too many times when Jesus comes and talks to you and seek you out face to face, one on one. It's not too many times in the Bible that you see that. Amen. amen. But God wants to, amen, have a communion with you one on one. Amen. When you have a communion with you one on one, he's going to give you what he gave to Jacob. He's going to give you a name change. That's right. He's going to change your name. He's going to change your And no more Jacob was a trickster. He was a supplanter. He tripped But after God got through with him, amen, he, we found out that he one of, was one of the patriarchs. And God named him according to his chosen people, Israel. What did God want to do in your life? You may be saying, but I'm not worthy. I don't have the degrees. I don't have this. I don't have a fancy house or a good car. I don't even have a job. That don't stop God. That ain't got nothing to do with what God wants to manifest in your life. God wants to manifest something in you and out of you and that it will cause it, his, his glory to shine out in the world. He said, you are the lights of the world now. He said, in this particular passage, he said, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. He's gone now, but the light is still in the world. You are the light, you are the light. And if a city is sitting over here, it cannot be here. If the room is dark and somebody got a candle and hold it up, everybody can see. God wants to use you and as a walk in the midst of darkness to call somebody to the walk in this light. Martin Luther King. 
Did Jesse Jackson have anything to do with the civil rights, amen, privileges that we have today? But Jesse Jackson and some of those pictures of historical remnants, amen, that we see when we open the books. Yes, yes, yes. Jesse Jackson was for president. He didn't make it. But we see his son, in my conclusion, we see his son as a congressman. His son received the benefits that he went through and struggled through. It just come out. Jesse Jackson's son and his wife. Right now. They're on trial right now. Maybe do some jail time for corrupt, corruptive activity. For taking about seven hundred thousand dollars and misusing it. Misusing campaign funds. When God blesses you to be up on that stage, you, you can't just do what you can you can you can try. You throw it in the cup, God don't pull it off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You have to know what to do yes, when God brings you up. Hope you got something out of the message this morning.